I decorated for Spooky Susan. Can anybody tell? No? Okay. You can probably see my skull, maybe. I don't know. I'm wearing my other mother t-shirt. You can't see it because we've got this bulbous microphone situation. Wonderful start to the video. Okay. As we've already established, I am not a spooky bitch, but when it comes to the fall, you know, we get into October, we get Halloween, and with Halloween comes witches. Are you picking up what I'm putting down? Are you seeing what I'm seeing? We're talking about magic. So today, I'm gonna to be talking about 10 books that just feel like magic. Now, does that mean that magic is in them? Probably, maybe, I don't know. I didn't specifically pick books with magic in them. I just picked books that give you that kind of whimsical, magical feeling that we all want in the fall. I mean, I'm assuming we all want it. I'm assuming you want it because you clicked on this video. I don't know your wants and needs, but let's just get right into it, okay? So the first book that I have to talk about today is actually a graphic novel, and that is The Gigantic Beard That Was Evil by Stephen Collins. This is following a man named Dave who lives on the island of here, not to be confused with over there, but here where everything is neat, it's tidy, everything's in its place, everything's doing what it's supposed to be doing. He is living his best life until one day his beard starts growing and it don't stop growing and it keeps growing and growing and growing. This one is super fun because it's almost got this childlike quality to it because obviously we have a beard that's growing, okay? It's not stopping growing. It's kind of ridiculous when you think about it. In the deeper sense, it explores themes such as life and death and not being able to fit into the box that society is trying to force you in. It's really good. It's great. I mean, of course you can read it and just enjoy it for that magical kind of childlike wonder quality, but if you start to pick it apart, you can get a deeper meaning out of it. I really, really love it. I love the art. I love the story. I think it's absolutely magical. You should check it out. Okay? Okay. Next, we have Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies by Heather Fawcett. I read this recently. I talked about it in my September wrap-up, September, August, and September wrap-up. I combined the two. I've already forgotten what I've done. Anyway, Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. So this is is following this woman named Emily Wilde. She's compiling this encyclopedia of fairies, as the title suggests. So she goes to this kind of remote village in the north called Leosland to study the final group of fairies that she has to add to her encyclopedia. If you've read or watched the Spiderwick Chronicles, this story reminds me a lot of that. It kind of has that same kind of vibe where there are fairies that are hidden from sight and if you gain their trust, they will show themselves to you. It just has that really whimsical, magical quality to it. This is kind of like if you were following Arthur Spiderwick as he's creating the damn field guide, okay? This is definitely a book that because of that Spiderwick type feeling really transported me into a different world, but the stakes are a little bit more mundane, so it gives you that kind of cozy, whimsical, magical, warm feeling that I just, uh, it's just magic. It's magical. I love it. Thank you very much. Next is The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. This is another kind of cozy fantasy story following this man named Linus Baker. I have forgotten his name, but I loved this book. I promise. I promise. Okay. Linus Baker. Moving right along. So we're following this man named Linus Baker. He is kind of like a social worker for magical children and he gets this important top secret case to go and investigate this school where the six most weird wacky children reside. One of them just happens to be the Antichrist. This one's a fun one because not only do we have magical children but we also have the magical feeling that comes with found family. It's very whimsical and mysterious and it's definitely magical. If you want some magic in your life. Pick up House in the Cerulean Sea. Next is another recent read and that is The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman. This book is following the story of this literal baby who somehow escapes the murder of his entire family, makes his way to the graveyard, and is adopted by ghosts. I mean just from the description alone, doesn't it sound like magic? Doesn't it, th doesn't it sound like it could bring some magic to your life? It has that whimsy that is pretty much a staple in Neil Gaiman's books. Neil Gaiman just has this power to transport you into a world that just feels completely other than our own in the sense that it is so filled with childlike whimsy and magic. East by Edith Patu. So this is a retelling of the Norwegian folktale East of the Sun, West of the Moon. If you're not familiar with that, it's very Beauty and the Beast, okay? So in this we're following this girl named Rose. Her family is kind of struggling and one day when a giant white bear comes to her and asks her to go away with him in exchange for health and prosperity for her family, she agrees. Now this does lean more towards towards the winter side of things, but I felt like uh, including it because number one, it's my video. Number two, uh, it's getting a little chilly outside. It's getting a little chilly. We're cozying up. This is a story of magical curses and mystery and love and I just 
absolutely adored it. If you're looking for a book that's magical that you can just cozy up with on a chilly autumn evening, this is definitely one that I would recommend. Next is one that I just can't help but mention, and that is The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. This is one of my favorite books of all time. This is the story of a sort of romance between these two battling magicians and the setting is a magical circus that only comes out at night. This is one of the most magical books that I've ever read. The atmosphere is just so vivid and the way that Aaron Morgenstern is able to describe the scenery in this magical circus and the little intricacies of the illusions that are in the circus, it's just absolutely mesmerizing. It's a book where the strongest point is the setting because the plot, the characters, everything are really reliant on the setting and what a freaking magical setting it is, okay? It is just so atmospheric and whimsical and just utterly magical. It's something that you feel like you can reach out and touch. And if you don't like the circus, you're not gonna like the book about the circus. Now, if you read The Night Circus and you thought it was good, okay, whatever, but you wanted a little bit more character development and plot, then I would absolutely recommend Honest Illusions by Nora Roberts. This is one that I've never heard anyone talk about on YouTube, but it's definitely one that I would recommend that you check out if you liked but didn't love The Night Circus. And if you're wanting a little bit more of that character development and plot. This is kind of like a heist novel with a romance between the daughter of a world-renowned magician who has a penchant for stealing jewelry and a escape artist. And it is just such a beautiful story. Again, I really love the atmosphere in this one. And I also feel like a heist novel with a jewelry thief kind of screams fall. Are we screaming fall here? I don't know, but I'm screaming magic. Magic, okay. Next we have The Child Thief by Brahm, and this could very easily be swapped out with Peter Pan because this is a Peter Pan retelling, but this is a lot darker than Peter Pan. Well, it depends on how you look at Peter Pan. I don't know. So in this, Peter only steals the children that he believes won't be missed, I guess. His favorite children to take are runaways, kids who have been abused, kids who have been abandoned, because he takes them to pretty much be cannon fodder in a war in the Neverland-esque place. It's a lot darker on the surface than the original Peter Pan story, but it still has that beautiful magical quality that I get every single time I consume the story of Peter Pan. So if you're looking for something that's magical like Peter Pan, but a little bit darker for that spooky fall season, check out The Child Thief. That was cringy. Next is the Wayward Children series by Shauna McGuire. This is a series that does not personally work for me 100% of the time, but I feel like I'm kind of in the minority with that. This series is following a group of children who have gone to other worlds at some point in their life. They found their home in those other worlds, and for some reason they've been sent back to our world. And because they have such a horrible troubled time dealing with the fact that their door to their world is closed. Their families send them to a school with other children who have gone through a similar experience. Most if not all of these children are struggling to find their way back to the world that feels like home. They're trying to find their doors but some of them have pretty much been banned from their world and so they're trying to deal with and cope with the fact that this our world, lame, I know, is going to be their home for the rest of their life. The odd-numbered books follow these groups of children as they are getting into these shenanigans at this school. Even-numbered books follow specific children and you get to explore each of their worlds. Some of these books worked for me, some not so much, but they are 100% magical. And I really feel like if you are wanting that sort of whimsy, maybe a portal fantasy type of situation, that this is definitely the series that you should check out. And last but not least, we have Howl's Moving Castle by Diana Wynne Jones. So in this we're following a young woman named Sophie and unfortunately she gets on the bad side of this really nasty witch, the Witch of the Waste. She gets cursed and she becomes this like old haggard woman. So Sophie goes on this journey to find this other wizard named Hal in hopes that he can somehow break the curse that the Witch of the Waste placed upon her. There's a talking fire, there is a sentient scarecrow, Hal is an enigmatic womanizer and he is just so charming and lovely. If you haven't checked out this book you definitely should. So those are 10 magical book recommendations for you guys. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books. Let me know if you enjoyed them. Let me know what is the most magical book that you have ever read in your entire life. I would love to know. This is the time for magical books, okay? But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please make sure to like and subscribe if you have not already, and I will see you next time.